Cable 12. So what we're going to talk about today is what is going on and why is, it, why is everything happening so fast this year. I've been writing about this industry for 26 years and I have never seen things go as fast as they're going just from last year's show to this year's show. So we're going to talk with a bunch of people today about why that is happening, starting with these three guys who are from the cable community. Um, has any, have any of you heard about RDK? Raise your hand. Okay, so we're going to talk about RDK. Mark's heard about it. Uh, so this is Chris Cholas from Time Warner Cable, Steve Reynolds from Comcast, and David Coulter from Charter, three of the lead guys involved with RDK. So, and we're also doing buzzword bingo again this year. Uh, so that means that if you hear the following buzzwords, I'm going paperless this year, RUI, RDK, HTML5, DLNA, CVB2, in that exact order, cloud and GPU, you get a free hot dog. Don't forget, just raise your hand the first time you hear any one of those buzzwords for buzzwords, bingo. So, okay guys, let's start with this kind of notion of innovation happening so quickly up the stack. You guys are kind of at the bottom of the stack with the RDK, but let's talk about what is RDK, why is it happening? Go for it. You got a buzzword bingo over there. Oh! <laughs> Sid, a hot dog so for you. So the RDK is a, a software platform <coughs> that uh, Comcast started working on a couple Sorry. of years ago. And it, it really was a, an idea that was born out of this notion about how do we move faster. Um, the, the typical set-top box development cycle for us was taken about 24 months when we, when we launched this project. And that's just a long time uh, to go through the whole process of building the box, building the software, and, and getting everything up and running. And so we had this notion of building a reference design for software uh, that would bring all of the modules necessary together into a pre-integrated kit where we could take that kit and work directly with the SOC manufacturers to get the RDK up and running on those chip platforms before, the box, uh, before they even started building a box around that chip. So by working directly with the SOC manufacturer to do that porting, we really make all of the software that we need for a box OEM available essentially when that chip comes back from samples. And our hope is that by launching this software platform and doing all this, this advanced work with the uh, SOC manufacturers, we'll be able to cut that development cycle to a year or even under a year uh, to, to launch a brand new set-top box. So from, from two years down to one. That is the hope, and if yeah. we can get it even shorter than that, I think that would be, uh, that would be great. Okay, um, so what does it mean from, uh, well, while we're, on the, while we're on you, Steve, talk about the ITAS licensing arrangement announced on Friday. Oh, what? sure, yeah, so there, there uh, were a couple of announcements that were done around the RDK leading up to the show here. Um, ITAS uh, announced that they had signed the, the integrators agreement, which means that they now have access to all of the source code uh, of the RDK, all of the, the source code that's in the, the open uh, part of the RDK. Um, Is there a so closed that, part? Well, there are, there are a couple elements of the RDK, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, that are proprietary, so things like the, the PlayReady DRM and the Adobe Flash uh, engine. Right. Obviously, we don't make the, the source code to those elements available because those are owned by those entities. But most of the RDK is, is available and it's part of the community source project. Um, so ITAS signed the agreement, they have the source code, um, and they're actually able now to do work both for the operators and for uh, box OEMs who may want to hire a third party to do RDK integration work. And there are a number of companies like VividLogix and Tosa and other companies that have signed the RDK integrators agreement as well that are available to do that kind of work. Okay. So how does this go to market? You have, the, you have this happening at the chip level now. When will we see boxes with it? And um, so you can actually see boxes today that are running the RDK. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for those of you who saw the announcement that Comcast made about the X1 guide, um, our X1 program, which had the code name Excalibur, um, that, uh, those boxes are actually already in the field. There are customers in, in our Augusta, Georgia system that have been participating in a field trial and you'll see more uh, launches this year of that X1 platform, which is all built on top of this RDK stack. Hmm. All right, what, what do you guys have to say? Chris. What do we have to say? <laughs> um, we've been looking at the RDK for our IP set-top uh, initiatives that we're working on towards the end of this year and early next year. Uh, we're excited about the RDK for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is mostly on the integration side. We, we see a, a very large benefit into implementing a single stack across multiple vendors, which we hope the RDK will offer us. Um, we spent a lot of time in that 
in that portion of the development cycle when we did OCAP, uh, maintaining three separate OCAP stacks, and it, it took a lot of time. There were a lot of differences, a lot of coordination to make that happen. So the benefit to running the RDK is really that. Keep everything simple in the stack, down inside the IP set top. Do a lot of modifications above the stack or above the browser, and, you know, in the HTML5 world, and, uh, and, and get it out as quickly as possible. Do other industries do, do this? Is this a, a common practice to? Yeah, I think there are certainly parallels that you can see in other industries where um, common stacks are defined and then different operators or, or different manufacturers work with basically that same code base. And probably the best example I can point to is Android. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a pretty robust community around Android. A lot of uh, handset manufacturers have adopted it. Um, and that kind of acceleration that you see of how fast you can launch new devices on top of a, a community source project is one of the things that really impressed us about this model. Okay. David, what, what is Charter thinking about this? What attracted you to it from? Oh, from uh, very similar to what, what Chris mentioned. We've been looking at a number of different paths that we were looking at how to move forward with, with uh, transition to all digital and, all, and supporting IP. And so we've been uh, mostly in the lab at this stage, working with a number of different hardware manufacturers, working with um, Divid Logix, now C Change. Uh, as our sort of integration partner. And we're kind of maybe taking a little slightly different step than Comcast, where we're actually doing an HTML5 user interface on top of it, where Comcast has started with uh, XRE. And so that, because Charter had not done a, uh, an OCAP guide previously, really gives us a chance to move forward with a, a different UI experience. And we'll probably see, uh, you know, I would imagine a field trial probably from Charter uh, towards the middle of next year. I'm sorry, I was giving away a hot dog. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Something about middle of next year? That would like to be for, for a field trial, yes. Okay, cool. So what are we looking at here? Well, the point that David just made about um, you know, the, the presentation engine that they've decided to use is actually one of the great parts about the RDK. Um, it, it does have the ability to support multiple execution environments. So uh, at Comcast, we're, we're using Qt, which is uh, a Nokia platform, a Nokia developed platform, um, that enables us to do portable, but, uh, portable apps at essentially a native layer. Um, other operators have chosen to use uh, the WebKit implementation of HTML5. Do I get a buzzword? No, no. sorry. <laughs> um, other operators have chosen to use that, that WebKit implementation of HTML5 to build their user interface on top of. But at the lower layers of the RDK, it's still the same portable code. So all of the work that's being done by Time Warner, Comcast, Charter um, to optimize the lower layers of the stack uh, is of benefit to all of us. Talk about what are we looking at on this slide? So this is this is the simplified version of the stack diagram that really shows the different layers that are in the RDK architecture. Uh, at the lowest layer, we've got code that comes from the SOC platform, and companies like Broadcom and Entropic have announced their support for the RDK program. Um, they do the they do the basic porting. They actually take the RDK and make it work on their platform. On top of that, an OEM uh, would would take that base port and make it work on their specific box. Um, so those would be companies like Pace and Cisco uh, and Motorola. And then on top of that, there is the common RDK layer. And this is really where most of the development work is focused. And, and what we're trying to do here is to keep as much of it common as possible. Um, there's, there are elements, and on this diagram, they're depicted on, on the left. Um, the reference implementation of OCAP, the JVM, which is part of the OCAP stack. Those are really elements that are focused on the QAM world, the, the QAM cable card MPEG-2 world. On the right side of the diagram in the RDK layer, you see the open source components. Things like GStreamer um, and the Qt, uh, Qt and WebKit, which are the execution environments I talked about. And then also optional plugins like Flash or Smooth HD, which is part of the Microsoft Play Ready system. So when I talk to people about this, it's that right part of the, of the top of the RDK that people glaze over on, like GStreamer and when he's saying cute, that's QT, right? Cute. Oh, yes, yeah. sorry. So, translation, please, on, um, on that and, and software these are just, language. These are just representative of some of the modules that are part of, of the RDK, but GStreamer is a, a media management framework. It actually allows you to do manipulation of the video streams. Um, it's something that was originally developed for the internet, uh, for, for web based content, but that we've adopted for our own IP boxes. Um, Qt is a windowing framework. It's basically a, a a windowing manager that allows us to do uh, multiple applications within the same runtime environment. Okay. What is the one thing you guys want this audience and our internet audience to remember or take away from the RDK effort? 
Um, I guess what I would throw out is that it is a community-based project, and so the more people we get participating in the RDK community, the more benefit I think we all get out of it. Yeah, and it gives, yeah I, gives us I, flexibility of platform. So we're able to go to multiple different OEM vendors and work with multiple SOC manufacturers, have a lot of choices. And the other thing is as we work with HTML5 on top of this framework, not only let's go across all the boxes that we deploy, but the same UI framework we're developing for, for Gateway and, 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 and other client boxes can also move to iPad and other devices that we're working with as well. And, and I think we're trying to consciously actually align from a cross MSO perspective where we didn't get to do that on OCAP. We didn't leverage changes that maybe Comcast or Charter was doing on the OCAP side. This is a real platform that we're all going to work towards together so that the, the community can actually benefit from this. Very nice. All right, well, thank you guys. Uh, Steve is going to stay up here and, and be my uh, Ed McMahon. <laughs> you, yes. you, you other gentlemen are dismissed. Thank you.